Welcome back to Welcome to Sophia. It's been a while, but thank you for your patience. This week, I shall be doing something a little bit technical and a little bit safety related. And it all starts with how these guys breathe. Each of these engines generates over two and a half thousand kilowatts of power. And when in use, they suck in huge amounts of air. But what happens when things go wrong? What happens if there's a fire down here? You need to know how to restrict that air supply to avoid feeding the fire and allowing it to spread elsewhere on the yacht. Of course, the engine room is a watertight compartment, so the air must be forced down here by specially designed fans. The fans are located up here on the main deck sides, normally covered by big grills, but because the grills have been sent away for service, they're going to be dipped and powder coated. It's the perfect opportunity to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So here we are. This is the intake fan. As you can see, it's pretty big. There's another one over on the starboard side. Together, they're just sucking in all of that air. We'll now just head back down into the engine room, just see where that air is getting pulled into. We'll also stop by the ECR and see how to switch the fans on and off. Here's a control panel. That's the big fan on the port side we were just looking at. It's running at the moment. We're not going anywhere, but it just helps to ventilate the engine room. Next door to it, two smaller fans will come to those shortly. Then down the side, fan speed currently set to manual, slow, but if you set it to auto, the fan speed will automatically increase as the engine speed increases and the engines need to draw in more air to breathe. Of course, this stuff is all for the chief engineer, don't want to go messing around with it, but this screen is also up on the bridge and as the officer of the watch, it just allows you to see what's going on and if you need to call the chief engineer for any problems. Back to the engines now and that big grill over there, that's where the air is coming into the engine room after it's passed through that big fan on the port side. On the starboard side, we have the entry point for the starboard side fan. Now that the air is in the engine room, it needs to go somewhere, and it's going to go to one of two places. First and foremost, when the engines are running, they're going to breathe it in. Firstly, through this filter, which is connected to the first turbo, but then after that, once the revs increase and the second turbo spools up, the second filter is also going to be sucking in lots of air, and that's when those fans are going to be running at full throttle. Once the air has passed through the engine, it will then be expelled through the exhaust system out over the side. The second place that the air will go is out through these exhaust fans. Remember earlier on we were looking at the control panel? There were two smaller fans next to the bigger fan. That's these two. So the air is coming in, it's going out through the engines and out through these exhaust fans. Back up to the main deck now, and that exhaust air goes through this ducting all the way up to the British deck aft, where it passes through these black grills and back out into the atmosphere. Whilst the engines are running, they generate a huge amount of heat. So it goes without saying that the air passing through this ducting up to the British deck aft is very hot. That's why we've got all of this shiny reflective material. It's helping to reflect that heat, stop it from being absorbed into the structure of the yacht. The engines stay very hot long after they have stopped running, which means even after you switch them off, these fans need to be running at full power to extract all of that heat. Now after we've been at sea, one of the first jobs is often to rinse down the yacht. But something to be aware of on this yacht at least is that all of that rinse water, it runs down here, runs over the grills and it pools on the non-skid section below. The air being extracted from the engine room is then blowing onto this puddle of water and at full power at least, it starts flicking it onto neighbouring yachts. Just a little quirk of this yacht that we need to be aware of in order to avoid annoying our neighbours. So that's how and why we have air running into and out of the engine room. Firstly, to let the engines breathe, and secondly, to extract all of the heat that they produce. But what's this got to do with you and safety on board? Well, think about it. We've got these great big engines kicking out loads of heat. What could possibly happen? Maybe a fire. If a fire were to break out down here, the last thing we want to do is to continue feeding it with all of this air. 
and pushing air around ducting throughout the boat where flames could also travel and spread elsewhere on the yacht. Here at the main deck fire locker, we therefore have the ability to shut down all of this machinery. If I were to pull this little lever here, won't do it just now, but if I were to, in addition to shutting down the engines and the generators, you would also shut down those fans we've just been looking at and close the dampers. I haven't spoken about dampers yet, but when it comes to fire safety, they're very important. This is one of the starboard side extraction fans. As you can see, the fan is currently off, but the damper is open. The damper is that series of flats running across the front of the fan. In the event of a fire, in addition to stopping the fan, it's also important to close the damper. Firstly, to stop any air being drawn down into the engine room where it could feed the fire. But secondly, because it'll stop any fire, any heat, from passing up through this ducting and possibly spreading to other parts of the yacht. Once the engine room has been completely isolated, we can move on to the next stage of our fixed firefighting system. That's a topic for another video, but when it's ready, I shall link it here. If you're working your way through your training record book, trying to get your yacht rating certificate or move on up to the heady heights of Officer of the Watch, make sure you find out how this works on your yacht. I found relevant tasks on pages 27 and 33. Find out how it works and then go and get them signed off. Even if you're not working your way through your training record book, remember that on a yacht there's typically very few crew, so there is a chance that regardless of your department, you will be the one who is instructed to shut down the machinery. Make sure you know how to do it. For more videos about how to get started in yachting and how to progress your way up the ranks, please do check out the rest of the channel. With respect to this video, if you found some value in it, a like would be fantastic, a sub would be amazing, and I very much look forward to seeing you next time.